Looking for inside footback again. Coach is going to signify to the post. Coach, the point here is we want to make sure as we come out of that post, we come on a, a deep angle. We don't want to come out of that break too shallow or too deep. We want to make sure we're driving towards the upfield shoulder. It's always easier for us and to our advantage to come underneath if the ball is shallow. If we come out of the break too flat and the ball is thrown at this angle, it's a touchdown. Let's demonstrate the drill, first group. Post drill. Say, hit, come on. Get out, good. Excellent, good. Good job getting at the highest point. Okay, let's try it one more time with another group. Say, hit. Transition to the post, highest point. Next drill is that we're gonna to bring to the post corner. Now, the receiver has given you the intentions that he's running a post. So as he drives to the post, now he comes back, we want a, what we call quick turn. Match his angle out of the break. If his angle's flat, we come out of our break flat. If the angle's deep, we come out of our angle deep. For the purpose of this drill, it's post corner, it will be a deep angle. We'll make sure that we match his angle at a approximately 70, 80 degree angle there. So hit. Post. Excellent angles. Excellent angles. All right, everybody caught the ball. Great job, fellas. Great job catching the ball, concentrating. The last drill is what we call a stem drill. Stem is backpedaling, and as the guy comes in and gives you a, a stem or inside release, we want to keep our hip square to the line of scrimmage and backpedal. Reason being is, as he breaks our cushion, we don't, and he starts to stem, we don't want to open up. We don't want to cross over. We want to keep our hips squared to the line of scrimmage. So we're going to backpedal, and we'll stem him off the line, and we'll bring him back, OK? We put this on the line so as they come off the line, we can make sure as they stem and keep their shoulder squared to the line of scrimmage that they're one yard off on their stem. Then we'll bring them back to the line. All right, here we go, fellas. Stem drill, eyes on me. Say, hike. Good, excellent. Shoulder square, good, excellent, excellent. This drill is a three cone drill. And what we're looking for there is this is a way for the guys to compete in their break, but also work in our foot placement. Inside foot plant, let's go ahead and demonstrate half speed. Get your heels on the line. Scoot up, heels on the line. There you go, scoot up. Say, hike. Nice and easy. Plant inside foot. Excellent. Now we allow them to compete with technique, proper technique, and compete. And the first one through the line wins. When the drill's over, they switch lines. All right, here we go. Say, hip. All right, pick it up, guys. Come on, let's go. Let's go. There you go. Now get out of it. Put it down. All right. Good. Good job. Here we go. Give me two more ready to go. Get your heels on that. There you go. Say, hike. Good, good. Put it down. Put it down. Plant, drive. Excellent. Excellent. Let's go. Who's next to? Put your heels on the line. Say, hit. Know where the cone is? All right, not bad. Next two. Come on, scoot over a little bit. And you scoot over a little bit. Say, hit. Come on. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Inside foot plant. Another drill we use is called, what we call buddy stem. This allows a player to work on keeping his relationship inside leverage or outside, whatever it is, to relation of the receiver. As the receiver comes out, the, the defensive back is going to match his angle. As he comes off, he's here. Now, as he weaves the other way, always at all time maintaining that leverage keeping our shoulder square to the line of scrimmage and, and being able to maintain our leverage. All right, here we go, buddy stem. Said, hey, inside, there you go, concentrate, good, excellent, excellent, good, good, next. Let's pick it up a little bit. Said, hey, good, excellent, good work, 
Good work. Shoulder square at the line of scrimmage. And uses a fit and strip drill. What it's simulating is a receiver coming out of the break, catching the ball, and we're working on getting that ball out. Remember, our number one goal is about the ball. The ball is the issue. We must get the ball out. Just because they catch it doesn't mean they need to hang on to it. Here we go. Set hike. Excellent. Excellent. That's excellent. Come on, next, next guy. You see what you're doing? Yes, sir. Okay. Say hi. Excellent. Excellent. Very physical. Getting the ball out. Got to be physical. Say hi. This is our fit and strip drill on the 90. And what we're simulating is a receiver coming out of the break. Coaching point is. As the receiver comes out of the break, we've got to match that angle. Go back, go back. If he's off the receiver and has cushion, he's going to drive that thing probably at a 45 degree angle. Now, if the receiver's closer to the receiver, I mean defensive back, as the receiver comes out of his break, and now it's a 90 break. So that's why we work all the different breaks, the 45, the 90. All right, here we go. Very important. Part of this is as the receiver comes out of the break, we want to drive to the middle of the back. If the ball's on the throne, now he can make a play on the underthrown ball. If the ball's on the outside, he's going to strip with his outside hand, secure with the inside hand. We always want to secure the tackle. If the ball's through the middle, he's going to play through the ball and get it out. Okay, here we go. Just put the ball wherever you want out of the break. Say hi. Good inside foot plant. Excellent. Excellent. Say hi. Excellent. Excellent. Coaching point is to make sure as the defender goes to the receiver that he doesn't pick a side. He wants to run his body through the receiver and be very violent and disrupt that timing and, and ability for the receiver to catch the ball. Now I want to talk about the partner cushion um, drill. What the, what the partner cushion um, drill is, as a defensive back coach, um, the back pedal always drives you crazy because your guys always want to um, open up as soon as, they're, um, as soon as they're attacked. They just want to get out of that, that pedal. And what this drill allows, allows us to do is um, to make them strain. So what I do is um, I get them eight yards from the receiver. So I'll get a cone there, and then I'll get a cone another 10 yards. And what I try to teach you guys, if you can strain for 10 yards, all right, and most of your five-step drops, um, they will break that route off anywhere from 12 to 14. So if you can strain for 10 yards, you can see everything in front of you and um, be ready to break and drive. Um, what a lot of young guys want to do is they want to take two or three pedals and open. And nowadays, especially in college, um, with all these good quarterbacks um, and everything's off of timing, what they want to do if you open, they want to throw that, um, they want to throw that, those timing routes right now. And what we want to allow our guys, if we can maintain our pedal and doesn't allow those guys to see us open our hips, um, now we make their job tougher. So um, again, um, what I want the DB to do is I just want them to strain in that pedal. So I like to get those guys um, four or five reps with this and where, where they really learn how, how to um, work that pedal, you know, and stay in it and trust it. But it's something, like I say, I like to do. Um, um, second phase of the partner cushion drill is the um, partner cushion open. And, and what I want from the defensive back now is um, the, um, the drill before is um, – we just strained in the paddle. Now, I teach those guys, you're in your paddle. Now you gotta understand when your cushion is broken. So at three yards, or three and a half for some guys, that's where they gotta understand. Now, they gotta burst open. They gotta get those, um, they gotta get their hips open. Um, they gotta get that, they gotta flip that elbow, flip those hips, get that foot pointed north. And now, um, you also wanna impede the progress of the um, receiver because what you have to understand now is you got to understand when you go to when, when you go to open you're going to lose 
um, a second, a second and a half. So you want to make up with that time. The quicker your transition is getting that foot open, getting that head around, okay, and then if you stack the receiver, um, like you're seeing the defensive back here and impede his progress, all right, you will allow yourself to gain momentum and get back to full speed where you can run with them. But I really like um, I really like working this drill. Um, like I say, so those guys understand, okay, that um, all right, about three, three and a half yards, my cushion's broken now. Now I want to open and burst. lean series um, the first series we want to talk about is in phase um, when you're talking when you're talking about being in phase is, is what I what I try to talk I always tell our guys you're either in phase or you're out of phase if you can touch a receiver I consider that being in phase you can touch his wrists you can touch his hips you're in good shape and, and what I try to do with the the in phase drill is I try to get um, I, I get two lines and what I want is um, I want the receiver to run three-quarter speed and um, I put the defensive back on his back hip and I tell him hey you're in phase but you got to fight to stay in phase and um, I think the biggest thing that you get with defensive backs is they got to know how to play the ball and play the receiver so as you look in here, the defensive back's in phase. He's impeding the progress of the receiver by banging his wrist or his thigh. Okay, and then what he wants to do, he, he never wants to look until the, until the receiver looks. When the receiver looks, you want to look and lean and then go get the ball at the highest point. Here, does a great job of leaning and stacking the receiver and now he can go get it at the highest point. What will happen, a lot of young guys will will um, try to catch the ball like with a basket catch without going up high, and you get these great receivers, and they'll take that ball away from you. Here's a really good job um, by the defensive back, competing the progress, all right, leaning into the receiver, and now going to get the ball at the highest point. So now I, I talked the drill in my look and lean series, and now as I um, as I break down individual routes in um, my individual periods, um, I like to work the deep balls also. So now, as you're looking at the defensive back, okay, now his cushion gets broken down, all right? He's got a he's got a man turn, all right, and now. He's got to impede the progress of the receiver. And as you see, the receiver looks, he looks and leans, all right, and has a chance um, to, to make a play on the ball. Now, this is the third phase of it. Now we're in one on ones. So as you're looking at the defensive backs here, um, we're in one on ones. His cushion gets broken. He opens. He goes for the cutoff. He goes to impede the progress of the receiver. And now he's leaning into him. Now he looks and leans. When the receiver looks, and tries to play the ball. And now we're now we have a game clip here. If you look at the defensive back up top, um, we happen to be impressed man here. But um, same thing, same scenario. Um, he's running with the receiver. Okay, the receiver looks. He looks and leans and can make a play on the ball. The second part of the look and lean series is um, out of phase. If you're out of phase, that means now you cannot touch the receiver. He's got you beat. And um, I really like this drill because um, it really teaches our guys not to panic. You know, a lot of young DBs always, um, they want to look back because playing defensive back and especially playing um, some man coverage, um, or even your three deep stuff, um, you're gonna get beat. And what young guys want to do, they always want to look back and see the ball. And um, that's what I teach our. That's what this drill teaches our guys not to do. So what I do is I start the drill off on the line, 
and I'll have the defensive back about um, two or three yards behind him and he's got a sprint and I teach him don't look all right I'm gonna throw the ball and what you have to understand um, a couple things got to happen first off quarterbacks got to get rid of the ball second off the receivers got to turn back he's got to look for the ball which allows him to slow down and then when he puts his hands up he's also gonna slow down there also so all we want to do is run put our head down and run and when you put your hands out we want to time it up so as soon as you put your hands out I want to try to rake it with my hand and, and come down with something get that ball out of there and the other place I like to teach this technique is I like to teach this technique in the red zone um, <clears throat> A lot of times in the red zone, we play flat-footed, and we just try to jam. Um, we just try to jam and turn to the receivers. And um, what this allows us to do is you get a lot of big receivers. And what we teach our defensive backs, still don't panic. All right, you want to lean into him. Okay, you want to lean into him. All right, as he turns back for the ball. All right, and then you just want to play his hands, and you want to go up through those hands and be violent. So again, just don't panic, okay? And when they put their hands up, you just go up through it and come down. So what we're gonna talk about is the um, mirror shuffle series. The first drill of the series I wanna talk about is no hands. What this allows you to do is work on a defensive back's lateral quickness. So especially if you play some press man or you play cover two, a good amount of cover two, um, you can work on those techniques. And um, I start off working no hands. And all I want to do with the defensive back is I tell him, hey, read the receiver's hips. And um, you're going to work lateral on his movement with the first whistle. With the second whistle, once I blow that second whistle, the whole thing the defensive back wants to do as you look here is these guys, they want to take the charge. They want to stay in front. And they want to they wanna take the charge. And <clears throat> so they learn how to move their feet to um, take away that initial um, release by a receiver, especially in press man. The second part of the um, mirror shuffle series is the um, one hand jam. And um, what we want to do with the one hand jam is um, now um, we want to aim for the breastplate. Um, so it's a lot like the mirror shuffle. I mean, we're still working our shuffle and everything. Um, but like I said, we want to get a good punch on the opposite breastplate. And then as the second whistle goes, now um, as they're getting a the jam, they want to run. Um, they want to run with the um, with the receiver, but like I say, you want to get a good solid jam, and you want to work that lateral movement. And um, like I say, it's another way to work your man technique. that allows us to work on our press technique and get a lot of reps. Um, it's another way of doing one-on-ones, um, but you're not you're not using the whole field, you know? I'm breaking it up where they're about um, five yards in width and about seven yards in length, and um, it allows us to um, work our techniques as defensive back. Um, the first thing we always talk about, we talk about feet, 
hands, hips. As you as you're looking here, the defensive back, um, he wants to take the charge. He wants to cut the receiver off so he doesn't allow him to get into his route right away. And then the second phase of it is um, he wants to get that um, opposite hand jam. So now we go from the box release to one-on-ones. And um, what it allows me to do, it allows me to, um, okay, teach a defensive back, all right, um, did you do the right things in the box release? All right, now they'll show up in a, um, in a competitive sit situation here as you're watching the one-on-ones. And as you watch a defensive back here, all right, you see um, he takes that lateral step and now he tries to get that opposite hand punch, okay, as as the receiver's getting into his route. Because the whole the whole thing is you want to throw that receiver's timing off. If you're playing some type of press coverage, right, that quarterback doesn't have all day. So everything they do is on timing. So our our goal is to throw off the timing. And the defensive back does a pretty good job and then he finishes pretty well. As you watch the defensive back here, does a great job taking his lateral step. He gets um, countered inside first, so he gives that left hand, so which is a pretty good punch. Then he takes that lateral step, and then he comes with that right hand jam. But it's pretty well done here by the defensive back. Early in uh, fall training camp, it's actually something that we do with every position group in our off-season uh, workouts. Uh, as a defensive back, our life is all about reaction. And what I do in this drill is I just get the guys uh, pointed in a lot of different directions and uh, their eyes are focused on me as the coach and uh, they're going to react to me. You know, I, I've got a, a 10 by 10 box set up here. First command, I'll say set hit. They'll get their feet firing in place and then I'm going to point them in different directions. And we're just going through a lot of different movements that defensive backs have to do. It's either they're, they're going to backpedal, plant and drive, back pedal, plant and drive, open at a 45 degree angle, and then I say out. And I want them to finish the drill through the cone, and then sometimes we will have balls here where they gotta go attack the ball at the high point. Next guys will hop in the box, set hit, fire their feet in place, and they're just going through the different movements. Again, we wanna keep the uh, knees bent, hips down, knees over toes, shoulders over knees. We want our arms, uh, uh, the elbows locked at 90 degrees, elbows behind the back, and we wanna pump the arms, wrist to hip action. Do got two new guys will hop in the box. Again, I really like it just because it's working on reaction, having eyes on a fixed focus, uh, on a key, and changing directions, and then finishing the drill. Again, this is a great uh, drill for defensive backs, but I, I do think it's something that's good for all positions, especially during the off season. And you can incorporate whatever type of movements that you want that are specific to different positions. But we, we typically go four or five different movements, and then we're out of the box. Next drill that we're going to go to is what we call a pedal box. This is a good warm-up drill. Typically, we do this at the beginning of an individual period for defensive backs. Uh, we'll start the drill coming off the sideline. We do most of our drills coming off the sideline, and we're doing them on lines. And our lines are used as reference points, and I'll kind of um, explain that a little further uh, as we go through the different drills. But in this drill, what we're doing is just working on our back pedal. Back pedaling out to the hash, shuffling across uh, to the uh, next yard line, and then back pedaling back to the sideline. Again, in this movement, what we're looking for are ankles close together. What we want uh, is we back pedal, and the reason we use these lines is we want the inside part of our foot on either side of that white stripe. It's a good landmark, a reference point for our feet, so our feet aren't too far apart. We want to uh, back pedal with our ankles close together. Again, our knees are over our toes, our hips are low, our shoulders are over our knees. You can see uh, with these guys here, the arms are locked at 90 degrees and the elbows are up behind the back and they should be going wrist to hip uh, with their arms. We talk a lot about pedal like you're going to play. Um, this is a early drill that we would do in individual period um, to kind of get our body moving in uh, uh, the direction that we're going to with a, a lot of back pedal. Here it is with a weave. But again, uh, it, it's not a half speed um, or three quarter speed drill. It's a full speed drill. And you know, we work on uh, pedaling like we're gonna play. It's the only way we can get better. You know, I will talk about the uh, weave uh, and the angle pedal a little bit later, but uh, we can pedal straight back and we can pedal at an angle and weave in this drill uh, fairly quick. 
Okay, the next uh, drill we'll go on to are our two line drills. And this is what we do most of the time. Uh, first thing that we're gonna do here, talk about flip and goes. Um, we'll get two guys up. I'm the coach, uh, two guys up five yards apart here in this drill. Uh, both of them will start with their outside foot up, inside foot back. Their eyes are on me. I'm uh, simulating the quarterback. And I'll give them a couple different commands. I'll say set, hit, and they're going to come out slow and controlled. You can see the read steps are coming out slow and controlled. And then they're going to accelerate into a back pedal. So it's walk and pedal. Okay, We walk, pedal, and then we're going to flip to our left or flip to our right based on the drill. You can see here, again, pad level remains low. The knees are over the toes. The hips are low. Shoulders are over the knees. Arms are locked at 90 degrees, and it's wrist to hip action uh, as they begin that back pedal. Okay, now let's talk about the turn. Okay, we talked uh, previously about in the turn how we want to prep the opposite foot. In this particular drill, I'm having the defensive backs turn to their left. So they're going to prep their right foot. You can see here this defensive back uh, to the right as we see it. Uh, he's turning to his left, so he has prepped his right foot. It's turned at a 45 degree angle. It, that will allow him to get his hips open at 180 degrees and stay on that line throughout the whole movement. That's important. No wasted steps. That transition from that back pedal, that forward run is important and it makes a huge difference. Okay, we want to keep the uh, shoulders down. We reduce the near hip. We reduce the near shoulder here. You can see he keeps that shoulder low. Throw the elbow behind the back. The, the foot is, uh, opposite foot is prepped at a 45 degree angle, hips are open at 180 degrees, he can turn and run and finish the drill on the other side with the ball. We try to incorporate balls with everything that we do. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than having a defensive back in the right position and not able to finish because he can't catch the ball. We want to catch as many balls as we can in all of our drills. But in this one, this is just a flip and go. It's come out slow, controlled, accelerate, and then we'll turn on the coach's command and again, everybody's executing a turn to their left and they're catching the ball. We want to go attack the ball, hands out in front, look it into the tuck. Okay, we've pedaled out to the hash. Now we go back and we're going to flip to the right going uh, back to the sideline. Again, come out slow, controlled, accelerate, turn into the right. Again, uh, you can see slow, controlled. You can see good pad level. Elbows locked at 90, elbows behind the back. As he's going to his right, you can see the left foot now will prep. Turn it at a 45 degree angle. Reduce the near hip and shoulder. Throw the elbow behind the back. Open your hips at 180 degrees. Turn and run on that line. Go attack the ball on the other side. Good look at the drill there. But we will start off every individual period with some sort of a back pedal and possible turn and go with ball drills. But here again in this drill, these guys are all turning to their right. They went out to the uh, hash, turning to their left, going back to their right. Okay, we talked a little bit about being able to backpedal at different directions. Uh, we need to be able to backpedal straight and to our left and to our right. The next thing we're going to do is talk about angle flip and goes. Okay, so we're going to start the drill the same. Two line drill, two defensive backs up. I'm the coach. We're going from the sideline out to the hash. We're going to be working from uh, one yard line to the, uh, with a five yard uh, uh, angle here going to the opposite uh, yard line to their left. Okay, we'll be back pedaling at an angle, starting here going to our left. Okay, when we back pedal at an angle, it's important that we talk about keeping our hips and shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. The sideline here is simulating the line of scrimmage. Okay, we want to keep our hips and shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. As I'm going to my left, okay, my right toe will go behind my left heel here as you see the, them in the back pedal. We talk about toe to heel, toe to heel, toe to heel, toe to heel. Okay, that will allow me to keep my hips and shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. Why do I want to keep them square? Uh, as we're in that angle pedal, uh, at uh, some point we're going to have to get out of it. We're going to have to uh, plant and drive to our left or to our right. By keeping my hips and shoulders square, I can go uh, in either direction. So many guys when you talk about angle pedal, the first thing they do is they just turn their body and they end up uh, pedaling in the direction you want them to go, but it's just going straight back because they've turned their hips and shoulders. By going toe to heel with their feet, uh, they can keep their hips and shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. With the arms, everything remains the same. Elbows locked at 90, elbows behind the back, wrist to hip action with my arms. And in this drill, we're going to angle pedal, then we're going to go straight back, and then we're going to turn and run just like we did in the previous one. And here they're going to angle to their left, flip to their right. 
And as we come back from the sideline, or from the hash to the sideline, we'll do it just the opposite. Again, angle to our left, straight back, flip to our right. And then again, we want to catch the ball on the other side, go attack the ball, look it into the tuck. On that turn, same thing applies here. Okay, reduce that near shoulder and hip, throw the elbow by, prep the opposite foot, get the hips open at 180 degrees. When you're looking at doing drills with your defensive backs, I, I really think it's important that you study game film to come up with the drills that you want to do. So many times, uh, and I used to be the same way, we would go to a clinic or hear somebody talk and they would have this nice drill and we'd think, oh boy, we got to do this with uh, uh, our players but it didn't apply, it never showed up on game film. The reason I do the drills that I do is because through the years of coaching, there are drills or movements that show up on game day. And those are the movements and drills, or the movements that I wanna drill with my guys every single day, things that are showing up on game day. I'm not gonna do a drill just to do a drill because somebody else did it or it looks fancy. I wanna make sure I'm doing a drill that applies to the game. Okay, so we did the drill, the uh, angle flip and go from the sideline out to the hash. Now we're gonna do it from the hash back to the sideline. Okay, we did it uh, angle pedal to our left, flip to our right. Now we're gonna angle pedal to our right and we're gonna flip to our left. Again, uh, from this view, you can see how they keep their hips and shoulders square. Now it's left toe to right heel. Okay, good job here by the uh, right defensive back as we see it uh, on the turn. Reduce the hip, the shoulder, throw the elbow by, get the hips open at 180 degrees hands out in front and go attack the ball. But again, these are uh, drills that do show up um, every single day or uh, when you're talking about games, they show up all the time. This next drill is uh, what I call a shuffle agility drill. Um, the reason I do this drill is uh, we have to have the ability to go lateral to our left and to our right and react again uh, to a receiver or to a ball carrier. Uh, this is just, uh, again, being in a good football position in a squared stance, eyes are fixed on my key, which is uh, me, the quarterback, and I'm gonna have them go uh, to their left and then back to the right and then flip them out uh, at 180 degrees and catch a ball on the other side. Okay, why do I do this drill? Again, we do a lot of press technique. Uh, our defensive backs have to be able to move laterally uh, when we're uh, playing press technique. When we play cover two, defensive backs, corners have to be able to go laterally to try to jam and reroute. When we tackle, we've got to be able to step laterally. Uh, when we're on special teams, so much of what we do on special teams, we have to step laterally. We've got to be able to react to what uh, my key is telling me. So we just want to keep a uh, good athletic position. Uh, our knees are, are uh, over our toes, our hips are down, shoulders over our knees. We want to be able to step to our left and then back to our right, flip our hips 180 degrees and go attack. Uh, the ball at the other side. It's important that we don't click the heels here. They're short, quick steps. We always want to keep the cleats in the ground so we can be able to react and change direction. Uh, we don't want to hop, we want to step. In everything we do uh, with press technique, cover two, tackling, it's all about stepping and not hopping to keep the cleats in the ground. Okay, the next drill. Um, we talk, talk about the back pedal and being able to transition to the forward run, now we've got to be able to plant and drive out of that back pedal back towards the, the receiver, the ball carrier, their line of scrimmage. And this is just a drill that we use to teach the T-step. Okay, Again, when we talk about planting and driving, my plant foot is the foot furthest in the direction that I want to go. My drive foot um, is my front foot that I'll get down and point it in the direction that I want to go. So here, uh, it's just a two-step drill. Before we ever get into the back pedal, it's walk, and when I point, it's a plant and drive. You can see he's going to plant and drive to his right at a 45 degree angle. Uh, his left foot will turn, and that becomes his plant foot. His drive foot will get put down in the ground as fast as he can, and he'll come out nice and low, headed in the direction that he wants to go. Plant and drive. And what we're doing is just rapid fire back and forth. One line's going to their right, one line's going to their left. The players will rotate lines as they uh, execute the drill. One, two, plant and drive. One, two, plant and drive. And again, it's important that we keep that plant foot within the cylinder of my body. I want to keep it underneath of me the best I can. We want to get that dry foot down as fast as we can. We want to keep the feet tight at the top. 
Okay, if you get a lot of separation between your plant foot and the dry foot, it's a waste of time. It takes you longer to get out of that back pedal. But this is just an easy way to, to introduce the T-step in that plant and drive before you ever get into a back pedal. This is one of the first things that we'll do before we do anything else. We want to, come, again, come out nice and low with the pads. Talk about almost being able to grab grass if they're coming out low enough. But uh, we can get a lot of reps uh, doing this drill this way. Okay, the next thing we'll transition to is, is the pedal, plant, and the drive. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is just uh, pedal, plant, and drive straight back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, have them come out slow and controlled, just like we did in the two-line drill. And then we'll accelerate, and then they're going to plant and drive going right back to the line of scrimmage. In this drill, I've told them it's going to be a right foot plant. So you can see them both back pedal. You can see them both uh, turning their right foot at a 45 degree angle and drive off their left foot. So it's slow, accelerate, plant and drive and go make a play on the ball. Accelerate, plant and drive. Again, we want to make sure that we keep our feet close together. Slow, controlled, accelerate, plant and drive. Now you can see here that it's a left foot plant. Now they're going to plant off their left foot. They've got to be able to do both. Walk, pedal, plant, and drive. You want to stay on that line throughout the whole movement. Pretty good job here keeping the feet uh, tight at the top and, and nice and quick here with number two. Plant and drive. Really good look here by number 10. Left foot plant. Feet are tight at the top here. See his arms are nice and tight. You see 24, his arms are all over the place. You can see it takes him longer to get out of that back pedal too. Okay, now uh, we'll go to what we call the W drill. Now we're going to plant and drive at a 45 degree angle uh, instead of straight back towards the line of scrimmage. We're going to uh, say set hit. We're going to pedal. And then on my movement, they will plant and drive at a 45 degree angle. Again, now um, in this particular drill, it's going to be a right foot plant first because they're going to their left. So when they want to plant and drive to their left, their right foot becomes their plant foot. They'll turn it at a 45 degree angle. Left foot becomes their drive foot. Get it down and point it in the direction that they want to go. We want to keep the feet close together at the top. And our feet should basically form a T between my plant foot and my dry foot if we're executing it right. So everybody here is going with the right foot plant, plant and drive at a 45 degree angle. What we don't want to do is round it off. And really here number 10, it, it, it shows what I'm talking about here with the round of both of these guys do. They round it off. You can see their, their uh, dry foot. Um, instead of forming a T with their feet, they're rounding it off at the top and it's wasted movement. Everybody will get a chance to do this going to their left and then uh, we'll come back and do it to the right. Watch 21 here. Pretty good look here with the plant foot being underneath of them. Gets that dry foot down. Not bad. Nice look here at 12. Plant and drive. Okay, now we'll go back, same drill, but now it's a left foot plant going back to our right. Again, what you really want to look for when you do these drills is how fast they're getting that uh, drive foot down. And these are drills that your defensive backs can do on their own throughout the summer uh, when they want to put in a little extra work. You know, just go out there either on their own or with a partner and they can do these drills together. And I think it's really important that you get your guys to do that because if you really want to get good, these are drills that you have to do uh, all the time. Okay, next drill here is uh, uh, similar to the W drill, but what we've done is we've taken the back pedal out of it. Um, as a defensive back, so many times you're going to back pedal, you're going to open and then break back either uh, to a comeback or to a curl based on what the uh, receiver is running. In this drill, 
it's breaking on a comeback. So I'm the quarterback to the inside. They've already backpedaled. They've opened to the quarterback with their vision. And now we're in a side run, and then we're going to plant and drive on a comeback, again, with eyes on that quarterback. What we want to try to do uh, is keep our hips perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. We talk about zone hips. Okay, zone hips, we want to keep our hips perpendicular to the line of scrimmage as long as we can. It'll uh, allow us to transition and plant and drive on a comeback or a curl a lot easier. Okay, what do I mean here? Perfect example. Look at the difference between 10 and 24 here. 10 has good zone hips. Hips are perpendicular to the line. You can see 24 has opened his hips. It's going to be harder for him to flip back and break on comeback and curl routes versus number 10 here with his body position. You can see hips are low, pads are low, 24. Hips are up, pads are up, hips are open. And you can see, again, who can get out of it faster? Number 10 does a lot faster. Good body position. Good example of a uh, good and bad there. But we get two reps. Again, it's important you got a plant foot. Um, here, your upfield foot will become your plant foot. Your down foot, uh, downfield foot is your drive foot. And it's a pivot turn. And get out of it and again, go catch the ball. Uh, go attack the ball. Again, 21 here is uh, turning his hips too much. I do think it's important, um, you know, at the high school level. Uh, I know it's hard to videotape, but I think the more you can videotape your guys, um, whether it's in the season, out of season, and coach off the videotape, I think it's important for them to be able to see. Uh, we can all talk about it and try to explain it, but once they actually see it on video, I think it starts to set in a little bit uh, better. Here we're going back the other direction. Again, we want to keep our hips and shoulders perpendicular to the line of scrimmage as much as possible. Now our uh, left foot becomes our plant foot, right foot becomes our drive foot. Pivot turn off that upfield foot and go make a play on the ball. Okay, now uh, we're going to incorporate the back pedal with that drill. So now it's slow, controlled, accelerate, open, then plant and drive on a comeback. So we just worked previously in the previous drill the top of, of this uh, drill, the top of the brake, now we're going to incorporate the back pedal with it. So it's walk, pedal, open, plant and drive at a 45 degree angle. Again, it's important to, to emphasize the finish in all of the drills. You've got a beginning point, you've got a finish point. Here the finish point is to go attack the ball. It, make your uh, defensive backs have better ball skills by teaching them to finish. Hands out in front, go attack that ball, look it into the tuck and finish the drill. But here we're going to come out again, walk, pedal, open, and then break. And you can kind of see the progression that we go through with our players here on some of our everyday drills and how we teach the movements. Now we're going to do it the other direction. Walk, pedal, open, plant and drive. Here we have managers uh, throwing the balls here. Um, if you don't have managers, which a lot of you may not, take some of your other players and put them over here and have them throw the balls. And they can just rotate who's throwing the balls throughout the drill. But I do think it's important to get that incorporated into your drill work. Walk, pedal, open. Now it's a right foot plant as we break to uh, our left on a comeback. Okay, now we're going to do the same drill, but now we're going to break on a curl. Uh, before we were breaking on a comeback, now we're going to break to the inside on a curl. Yeah, now we're going to just work at the, uh, on the top of the brake. We're going to take out the back pedal. It's a side run. Now it's a plant and drive inside, simulating breaking on a curl. Again, we don't want to round off the brakes. We want sharp brakes at a 45 degree angle, trying to eliminate wasted movement. But uh, when you break down film and you study what your defensive backs do in games, all of these movements will show up. Regardless of coverage that you do, um, whether it's man, whether it's zone, these things will all show up and they will apply. Okay, now, as you watch me here as the coach, previously in the other drills, uh, these guys were reacting to a shoulder turn of the quarterback. Okay, the other thing that I will put in here is have them react to a stutter of a uh, receiver. Uh, in zone coverage, we're going to break off the shoulder turn of that quarterback. In man coverage, our eyes are going to be on the man, and we're going to really be breaking on the stutter 
okay, of the receiver. So there are two different ways that we will uh, have our guys react. Shoulder turn of a quarterback or stutter by a receiver. And this is a stutter of a receiver. You've got to be in shape to do this drill because you're, you're moving a lot as a coach. But you're just going to be jogging a place and then stutter. Again, then they're going to be breaking on that curl, plant and drive. Okay, just like the previous drill, now we're going to uh, include the back pedal with it. Slow, controlled, open, and then plant and drive. So we broke on the comeback, and now we're breaking on the curl. We've broken straight back to the line of scrimmage. Just examples of all the different movement drills that these guys are going to have to get good at. And we'll do this in both directions. If you've got a lot of guys, well, I do a lot of two-line drills. You could do four-line drills, three-line drills. It doesn't matter. It all depends on the number of guys that you have uh, in your group. Okay, the next drill that we're going to do is what we call a closed drill. Uh, this really incorporates a lot of the things that we're doing plus a uh, reaction here. Okay, two guys out here still uh, on the five or on the uh, two lines, five yards apart. I'm the quarterback. These guys are the receiver. Or, uh, one guy is going to be a receiver. One guy is going to be a defensive back. Okay, in this drill, again, we're going to backpedal, and then on the shoulder turn of the quarterback, uh, if I turn to one of the defensive backs, he will stop. He becomes the wide receiver. The other defensive back uh, will now plant and drive and work to the interception point and catch the ball. So there are a lot of different things going on here in this drill. Okay, one, we're going to uh, backpedal. Somebody's got to plant and drive. And it's all off of a reaction of the quarterback. So you're building some reaction skills here also. Okay, the next thing here that's important. Okay, we talk a lot about man, then ball. You can see here the defensive back, when he plants and drives, where do his eyes go? They go to the man. Okay, that's an important point. When we're talking about man to man, we really need to train the defensive backs. When they break, when they come out of that break, their eyes go to the man and not the quarterback. If their eyes are on the quarterback the whole time, they're going to uh, put themselves in position to get beat on double moves. When this guy stutters and takes off, you know, we'll get beat on double moves. So this drill, again, the plant, the drive, it's, it's reacting, it's planting and driving, and it's eyes, training the eyes to look at the man and then back to the ball. And they're not sure who's going to be who here. It's all off of me and where I turn. Okay, again, we want to break to the interception point in front of that receiver and make a play on the ball. But everything that we just worked on on the two line drills, now we're starting to progress and we add reaction to it. Okay, the next part of here, now we'll spread them out. Instead of being five yards apart, we're 10 yards apart. Plant and drive, now there's more ground to cover. They really have to burst out of that plant and drive to get to the interception point. They got to strain to get there and get the ball. But this is good for either man or zone. Zone, you're reacting and again training the eyes and man to man. You go to the man, then to the ball. As a general rule, uh, I like to tell the defensive backs, you know, when, when, they always ask, hey, when do I look back, coach? I tell them, when you can get in position to touch that uh, receiver, then you're usually safe to be able to look back. Okay, the next drill here again incorporates the pedal, reaction, the plant and drive. Okay, we did the W drill earlier where they always knew it was a right foot plant or always knew it was a left foot plant. This drill, it's going to be a left or right foot plant, again, based off the quarterback's shoulder turn. We've got two pop-ups here. We put a defensive back right in the middle. And it's just the W drill that we did before, but it's either going to go to the left or to the right based on the quarterback. So now you're building those reaction skills. You've taught them how to pedal. You've taught them how to plant and drive, uh, and plant the right foot, left foot. Now it's reacting and going left or right without wasted movement. So I'm going to pedal them and then I'm going to turn. They're going to plant and drive and again the eyes. Eyes to the man then to the ball. Come in front and make a play on the ball. Next defensive back will, will step in, drive, or pedal, plant and drive. Pretty good job here with the feet. Forming a tee with his feet, pretty tight at the top. Then look back once he gets in position to touch that receiver.
Nice job here with the footwork. Plant and drive, accelerate, and then eyes transition from the man to the ball. But this is a great drill uh, to teach reaction and uh, to really help with, uh, you know, either going left foot plant or right foot plant based on either a receiver or a quarterback. Now again, we worked on this uh, drill, W drill, the side run, and either breaking on a curl or breaking on a comeback. Uh, again, it's all based off the quarterback here. So we, again, we've transitioned, just adding another element to the drill. You can see here, the first guy broke on a comeback, this guy now is breaking on a curl. Again, it's important that you emphasize the finish of the drill. Go attack the ball. But always keep the hips uh, down, the knees bent, good pad level throughout the whole drill. And you can do a lot of different things with these pop-ups. Whether it's the plant and drive at a 45, breaking on a comeback, breaking on a curl, a lot of different movements. Next drill that we're going to do is uh, what I call a cone plant drill. Again, it's just working a lot on reaction. Uh, as you can see, once we teach the drills, uh, the reaction part uh, of the drill becomes probably as important as anything. In this drill, we're just going to work on pedaling back, and then we're going to react again to a uh, movement uh, and have them plant and drive. And uh, here again, it's all a right foot plant to start, and then they're going to react to me. When I tell them to back pedal again, they're going to back pedal. When I tell them to plant and drive, they're going to plant and drive, and we really want them to finish. But I, but I like this drill just in terms of building reaction skills. Always keep the knee, knees bent, hips down, shoulders over knees. Would like to see the uh, uh, elbows locked at a 90 degree angle, elbows behind the back, wrist to hip action with the arms still here. Uh, with this shot here, it's kind of a profile shot. You can see the defensive backs leading with their butt, not their shoulder blades here. Tells me that the guys have good pad level. Now we're coming back, you can see it's a left foot plant instead of a right foot plant. We started out, uh, always talk about tempo. Tempo is important, but the execution of the drill to start teaching the, fun the proper fundamentals and the proper movement is important, and then you can transition to the, getting the uh, tempo. Here, uh, I want to end with just some ball drills, um, simple ball drills. Again, I think it's very important with your defensive backs that you get uh, balls incorporated with everything that you do. Uh, these are just simple drills to help teach your guys how to catch balls. Um, as coaches, we you know coach the guys all the time. You're always out there yelling, hey, catch the ball, catch the ball, catch the ball. But I don't think we spend enough time actually teaching them how to catch the ball. This drill here is just a high ball drill. Um, having them work uh, from the, the hash out to, or to the sideline here. Just having um, a ball thrown up high and going to catch the ball at the high point with thumbs down, looking the ball into the tuck, extend up high, timing up the jump. I think that, that's important too. So many guys mistime their jumps and you just got to work on it with them. Okay, then we'll go to a low ball here. Um, working on catching a ball that's thrown down low uh, under the uh, numbers or below the waist. Now the thumbs are up. We've got to bend our knees, sink our hips, thumbs are up. Again, eyes to the tuck. Tuck it away and run it back. But these are just some simple drills to help uh, teach how to catch the ball. Using a jugs machine is obviously a good way to before or after practice if you have access to one. If not, loosen up the arms. Okay, last drill here uh, is the center field turn. We've worked uh, on uh, turning or running in a straight line. Uh, this drill here simulates uh, playing either man or zone where a receiver will break you to a corner route and then double moves you back to the post and how we're going to open. And center field turn to get back on the upfield shoulder instead of opening back across our body. We want to get our head and eyes turned as fast as we can. We want to match the angle of that receiver. But when uh, he goes underneath the framework of my body, I want a center field turn, uh, get back up on top and stay on that upfield shoulder. And here again, we're incorporating the balls to go get the ball at the high point. 
but uh, the head and eyes will bring the rest of the body around. The faster you get your head and eyes around, it'll bring the rest of your body. And we'll do this to the left and to the right. We just start by pedaling straight back, then we'll open them at a 45 degree angle to the right, then center field turn them to get back on the upfield shoulder to their left. Now we're going the other direction. Straight back, open at 45 to the left, center field turn to the right. Making a plan of ball at the high point, tucking it away, and run it back. You can do these on air like this, or you can do these with partner, um, as partner drills also with the receiver running down, um, running a corner. Uh. Stem, just to teach our young men how to backpedal and then maintain their proper leverage, okay? So give me a young man out here right now, okay? And all we're going to do is backpedal you and stem you, okay? One way or the other. Whatever way you look. Just one time. Say, hey, backpedal, stem, shoulder square, good, good, excellent. One more, one more guy. Give me some depth on that. Pick it up and give me some depth as you're stimming. Say it, hi. Excellent. Shoulder square. Keep those shoulders square. Cut. Say it, hi. Excellent. Excellent. That's the one we want right there. Good job. Next drill is going to simulate backpedaling, stimming, and now we're going to open up the cover receiver. Give me a defensive back out. So what we're simulating here is as the Receiver runs straight, he stems us, and now he breaks our cushion, and we have to turn and open up in the proper timing. Hit, stem, Hit. excellent, excellent, that's good. Hit. Excellent, snap your eyes and go, good. Hit. All right, all right. That's all right. Come on, next. Breaking back out of 45? Yeah, breaking back out of 45. Hit. Good, good. Here we go. Hit. That's it. Excellent, excellent. Say hit. Good. That's it right there. Open, open. That drill is called open, open. All right, let's go. Good. Good. Excellent. We like to start the day off doing warm-up drills. And um, the first thing I like to do is um, ball drills. Um, I like to do 45, um, 90, 135 drills to really get the guys loose and make sure we're always catching the ball. So the first drill here is um, what we call 45-degree um, break, where the guy's going to take two to three paddles, plant with that outside foot, and um, like I say, I'm going to throw them throw the ball. I want them to catch the ball all the time. So that's the first drill we like to start off with. The next ball drill I go to is um, the 90-degree breaks. Um, and the same thing, we're going we're gonna to paddle about three or four yards. And then I want the guys to plant with the outside foot. Um, get those hips open and break at 90 degrees. And again, we're gonna we're, we're always gonna throw the ball. Like I say, that's the biggest thing we want to do in warm up. Um, we want to um, we want to slowly get those guys loose, but I, I always want to catch the ball. And the last drill we like to do in warm up is what we call um, 135, um, 135 degree breaks. And um, the whole thing is is now I want to throw a deeper ball. Um, we've done the 45s and 90s, so the guys are kind of warm. So I'm going to pedal them about five yards. Um, I'm going to open them up at 135 degree angle and um, throw the ball. I want them to go get it at the highest point. And like I say, by that time, um, by doing a couple um, right and left um, with the 45, 90, and then when we get to the 135, now or looser, where you can open them up a little bit. And um, like I say, throw the ball up there, highest point, and make them go get it. Got the back pedal. The most important skill 
for a defensive back is the back pedal. To start, we want to push off the front foot. We transfer weight to the back foot by taking a short four to six inch lead step, as you see here um, with the defensive back. We want to keep our hips positioned underneath our shoulders during the first step. We try to maintain our, our, our center of gravity while moving backwards. We use our arm to generate that initial momentum. The speed at which the back pedal is determined is based on um, where we are. Initially, we always take slow read steps and then we start to pick up the pedal. The biggest thing we like to do is push and sit as we're reading the three step. You have to understand, we are, um, we're not running backwards, we're taking short strides. We, we want the feet gliding across the grass as light as possible. We want the feet touching the grass. If they're not touching the grass, we're too high. We want, the, we want our arms locked and we want our hands loose. And I think some of the biggest issues you have um, with the back pedal is number one, um, like I say, you, you can never do enough back pedaling. Number two, I always like to um, use the line. So um, if the defensive back is out of control, he'll be all over that line. If he's in control, um, you can judge him just as you're looking here. Um, the defensive backs are, are um, they're on the line and they're not, um, they're, not, they're not getting off of it. And then the other thing you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure those elbows is tight. As you look at the defensive back here, his elbows could be a little tighter and he could probably bend a little bit at the hips. And then um, the other thing that you wanna try to prevent, a lot of defensive backs um, will pop up. But you, like I say, you wanna have, you, you wanna have balance. If you're all over the place, then you gotta take extra steps to transition. And as I said earlier, you can never you can never do enough back battles. The 180 degree open um, is the next drill we want to talk about. Um, th the biggest thing with the 180 degree open um, now you're you're using everything we've talked about. You're using your stance where we have a nice balanced stance. We're using our back pedal. And now the next thing we want to be able to do is now your, your cushion's getting broken or you're reading a quarterback and um, he's getting ready to throw the ball. So now what you have to do is now you have to get your hips open at 180 degrees. So the first thing you want to be able to do is get that left foot open. So you got to get that toe pointed north. You want to snap the, the head and get that elbow around. The quicker you can get that around, um, you can get you can get back to full speed because you got to understand once you go to open, you're not at full speed anymore. And the biggest thing is how quick can you get that that toe pointed north and get that head and elbow around. Now, the one thing that I make our guys do, I always want them looking back first so they get used to it and they're seeing everything. Unless we were just in um, straight man where we're turning our head, we're looking at the guy. But I want them to get in the habit of seeing it. And then the other thing is I always like to do this, these drills on a line so you can look at the DB. If he's all over the place, okay, if he's off that line by a lot, then, then he's out of control. All right, again, you look at it here. You see how quick he gets that elbow, that elbow around get that foot pointed north you see how those hips snap see how they snap around okay now he's in he's in pretty good shape and that's the biggest thing same thing here you watching how how he's getting snapped around the next drill we're going to do is what we call a run gather drill and it's a half line between the corner and the safety and, and a receiver and a back. The receiver has the option to either crack block or stalk. If he stalks, the corner comes up, 
Outside shoulder, arm and leg free. Yelling, outside, outside, outside. Free safeties, strong safeties, inside out on the tackle. If the receiver comes off and cracks, the defensive back's going to yell out, the corner's going to yell out, crack, 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 crack. Now he's going to come out yelling, outside, 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 making a tackle with his inside shoulder, keeping his outside arm and leg free as a free safety takes on a crack block. The last option we have to put in this is the crack and go. Crack and go, how do we know it's crack and go? The receiver's angle will let us know if it's crack and go. If the receiver's up the field at an angle that looks like it may be a route, we're going to weave with it and say, crack, 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 crack. But we cannot come up until we know for sure that it's not a pass. Coaching point is the receiver's angle to the crack block will tell us if it's crack and go or not. The receiver's flat. We're going to yell out, crack, 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 and replace. The receiver's up the field more. We're going to yell out, crack, 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 crack. But we're going to be constant, keep our outside arm on and leg free on this receiver, leveraging the ball. That way, if he goes up the field, we're still in position to make the play. Say it, hey. Good. Excellent. Excellent. OK. Let's do it with the crack. One, two, flat. Make sure you're pointing when you call crack. Here we go. Say it, hey. Good, good. Last one. Let's go crack and go. He's kind of going to work up the field a little bit. You're not really sure, so squeeze with him. You're on crack, crack, crack. And as he goes up, you go up. Running back, let's go ahead and toss it and just throw it on up. Throw it up there so he can go get the highest point. Don't throw it, launch it, but you know, can you throw? You good? Say, hey! Say, hey! All right. Good. High and tight. Good. Say, hey! Good, good, good. Say it, hi. Good, good. This is a block destruction uh, we worked on, and it's basically the half line drill we used to run gather. One corner's outside with the free safety coming inside. So as we take a look here, this corner is going to leverage the ball, and we're going to have inside out pursuit. He does a great job of coming inside here, keeping his outside arm and leg free. Let's take a look at it. Leveraging the football is big for us. Outside of that, take on the block, make the tackle. One more time in slow motion. Here the corner is. Recognize crack, opens up, drives, close the space, keep your outside arm and leg free, make the play. Now each day we're going to do some kind of block protection. Okay. First one is mirror butt. You want the guys at least one yard apart, okay? You want to step, step. Step, step, punch to lock out. Everybody rotates to the right, step, step. You don't want your, your feet any wider than your shoulders, and you want to lock them out. Stay off your toes. Okay, next drill we're going to work on is what we're working on, fundamentals and techniques, block destruction. How we take on a block with our thumbs up, controlling either the outside shoulder, whatever leverage we have on the receiver, buzzing our feet and getting off the block. Here's the drill. Remember the drill? Yep, outside, outside. Let's go outside on that side. Coach, a point on this. He's on the outside shade here, so as he takes on the block, He's going to yell out, outside, outside, outside. That's letting everybody know on defense that he's maintaining his outside leverage. The ball can't get outside. Now we got help inside out on the football. OK, block destruction. As we're taking on the block, we want to make sure we're controlling that inside pick and outside shoulder pad. With our butt down, pad level down, arms locked out, coaching point. Got to have your thumbs up, lock your arms out. 
Now, this gives him ability as a receiver's blocking him, his pad level's lower than him, we can defeat the block. When we stand up, we lose our pad level, and now the rece receiver get, uh, gains control of us. Another coaching point is that we want to make sure that we keep our hand on the outside shoulder with our outside arm and leg free. That way, when the runner comes out here, the defender can escape, square, and make the tackle. Say, hey, get off. Excellent. Come on, come on. Somebody else can do that. Come on. Say, hit, hit. All right. Good job. Good job. You guys can get in or what? Uh, let's go other side. There you go. Take it. Come on. Lock it out, Terrence. Shoulder square. Say, hit, hit. Excellent. Good. This drill, I want you to backpedal, OK? And then he's going to come at me. So it's backpedal. Boom. Stock. And then we'll get off when I, OK? Same thing we do in practice. Here we go. Say, hi. Excellent. Good job. One more. One more. Say, hi. Good. Good. Say, hi. OK, do it again. Outside, outside. And go on this side this time, TJ. No, stay over here, man. Yeah, there you go. Say, hi. Outside, outside. Good, good. Shuffle butt and cut. Two butts and a cut. Got to get my hips down, my outside leg, outside foot back. Lock them out, punch to lock out, sink my hips. I got to stop his momentum. He's working on hitting on the rise on the tackle. You got to make sure when you explode through a ball carrier or, or the guy with the ball, you want to hit on the rise and work up through that guy from low to high. So basically what we'll do is we'll get in a defensive back stance. So he's in his defensive back stance and he will backpedal out. He's going to backpedal out. He's going to plant and he's going to come up through and form fit and hit the, uh, the ball carrier and work up through on the rise. So basically you're going to backpedal out and as you drive, the big thing when the plant, you're going to plant your foot, come up through. Boom, hit that ball carry and work up through the man. In other words, you should almost pick him up off the ground. Shoot those arms right up through there. We want to jump, see me back, back. Can you backpedal? Just backpedal. Just backpedal. Can you backpedal? Jump in there. Don't be scared. Back pedal break. Here we go. Not bad. That's better. That's a little better. The thing is, I want you to come up off the ground a little bit. Go ahead. A little bit. Just, just jump up a little bit. Shoot on it, but jump up just a little bit and then go. Okay? Again, with the hit on the rise, he's going to back pedal out. He's going to plant point drive, work up through the ball carrier. When the ball carrier makes contact, he actually should come up off the ground. So kind of give him a little, little jump and work head up. Go ahead. Boom. As he plants, boom, he's working up and up off the ground and hit on the rise. It's tough to see this without pads. And you get a chance to see here in live drill footage. But uh, the, guy, the couple of coaching points, you want to stick that nose right up on his chest. Again, work that guy off his feet and run through. Again, hit on the rise, low to high, low to high. You guys flip this around. You'll be on defense this time. Ah, stay where you are. You'll be on defense this time. You're on offense this time. So you're going to backpedal out, plant, and hit on the rise through there. On the hit. Go ahead. Hit. He backpedals out. Boom. He's going to plant and up through and go. Again, run those feet. Hit on. After watching the hit, hit on the rise drill without pads on, this is a better look with, with pads and helmets on. Also, we added the defensive shoot, which, which definitely makes your players play a lot lower and hit from low to high. What we'll do, we have two guys in at a time. They'll backpedal, plant point drive, and it forces them to hit on the rise out of the shoot. As you can see, when they make contact, they need to work from low to high on the ball carrier. But again, the, the defensive shoot makes a big difference on making those guys work from a low to high position. You know, it forces them down, and then to come out, boom, you can hit, and they explode up. Both of those tackles right there are pretty average, you know, not really exploding up through the guy. You know, you'll see a pretty good example here in a second where the player really does a good job of hitting from low to high. 
and up through. As you can see, the player on the right, the player right here on the right, you can see him watching back pedal, watch the contact low, hit on the rise, up through the guy, taking him off the ground. And that's what we're looking for. The example on the left was not nearly as good, but it's very important to hit on the rise, working up through the guy. First drill we're going to take a look at is angle tackle and sideline tackle. Again, 10 yards apart, ball carrier coming with the ball in his outside hand, a couple of the components full speed, make contact, the head in front, as you can watch on the contact, hit on the rise, up through the guy, and then run through on contact, grab and finish. As you can see, most of the time we'll give a first command to get the guy going, and then we'll give a second command until he can finish driving his feet. But all in all, pretty good rep right here with the tackle. Again, defensive backs, most of their tackles in the game will be of this sort, where it's an angle or sideline tackle. Whether, you know, it doesn't necessarily be a sideline, but they can use, you know, either the, the defense to work into, but it's, it's usually going at an angle. Put the heads up through, a little, little high on contact. We're really looking at low to high, hit on the rise. Eyes on the ball, eyes on the target. You can get run through on contact, run through on contact. Pretty good right there. Again, just if you see the hips at this point, they need to close and they need to drive up through on the snap. Again, got to be careful. One of the components is neck bold and head up. And you can see he's kind of just dipping his head just a little bit. Plus, when you dip that head, you have a tendency to get your hips out underneath you and you can't roll them up through. Also, one component that, that I haven't mentioned yet is anytime a ball carrier is running, his shoulders are pointing down the field. At any time, if you can get his shoulders turned from the line of scrimmage and getting him going east and west, it will eliminate extra yards. You can see on this clip here, he's coming in and tackle, and that shoulder's turned immediately, and the ball carrier works to the sideline. We're working on shuffling behind the ball carrier. A lot of our safeties you know, will we'll do this in game situations where they're coming down and support. Basically, he's going to stay leveraged but inside out and behind the ball carrier in a good football position. Going to shuffle down the line. The running back will go ahead on his own and work down the line of scrimmage. As he works down, when he turns his shoulders up to move upfield, the tackler will engage, again, head in front, and run through that ball carrier. And run through that ball carrier. I'll send you on, well, I'll send you on command. I'll give you a hit. On the hit. On the hit. Hit. Boom. Shuffle. And as he turns, there it is. Explode. And up through him. The big thing, too, is to get his head in front and run and hit on the rise and roll through that guy. And roll through that guy. Another thing, too, we're training the eyes. We're visually training the eyes in position to be disciplined. Stay behind that ball. Shuffle. When he turns and those shoulders come up, then we'll work up through him. Work up through him. On the hit. Hit. Boom. There it is. Out in front. You don't want to get too far ahead of the ball when you're a safety as a cutback player or, or, uh, or a force player. You want to be in position and go. We'll take a look at it one more time. Hit. As he shuffles, boom, in position. When he turns up, explode and run up through him. And again, we'll just go through the lines. When your offense, you become defense. Defense becomes offense. The drill we're going to do right now is uh, anytime a safety has to come down from his spot, from the high safety, working back down the line of scrimmage, and then filling the hole at the line of scrimmage, whether on a power play or a toss sweep or anything. Basically, the quarterback will open up and pitch to the tailback. He'll shuffle across and be ready to hit a hole. You'll work downhill initially, leveraging him, and when he hits a hole, you're going to fill it, and you'll fill it. Slide over a little bit, quarterback. You can slide over a little bit, tailback. On the hit, on the hit, he's going to flip the ball to him and go ahead and work downhill and leverage. On the hit, let's go. Hit. Boom, he picks it. He's in position. There it is, filled the hole, and boom. If you get, as you noticed on that one there, you got too far ahead of him. You want to leverage that ball outside in or inside out, depending on what the defense is or where the, uh, the, the, how the scheme's set up. So you can either work it inside out or outside in. But again, when he pitches that ball, go ahead and pitch that ball to him. We're working outside in here. I want to leverage him, leverage him, because I don't want to overrun him, and then I'm in position. The thing is, too, I want to make contact in the hole. I don't want the ball to gain out four or five yards. I want the ball contact made in the hole. One more time. One more time. Move over to your right just a little bit. There you go. On the hit. On the hit. On the hit. Hit. Boom. It's coming downhill. Leverage it. Pick a hole. Boom. And there it is. Fill it. 
feet on contact and run up through. This is a tandem tackle. We'll work this with two high safeties, very similar to the fill the hole tackle. What we're doing now is we're working leverage. He's the front side safety, he's the back side safety in support. Both guys are working downhill. It's basically the same premise. He'll pitch the ball to him, he'll come out, and he'll work through that hole. As he comes in, if he happens to cut back, you're in position. You want to keep leverage working from, from your left in, and you want to work your left in and pin him together so you guys will work together as a tandem tackle. So on the snap, you'll both come downhill and work off that back. A lot of times that back can stay front side, and you just clean it up and you just fill in behind him. If he happened to cut back, you're in position. You don't want to overrun it that way, and you don't want to overrun it that way. On the hit, on the hit. Hit! Boom, as he pitches, he's in position right there, good. That's how it should look. It's exactly how it should look. Go ahead, go back. If he kept it front side, if he just kept going, boom, he's outside. You make sure you squeeze everything back outside in. On the hit, on the hit. Hit! He's in position. Boom, he's going to go outside, that's fine. That's where it'll be. It should both be in position. Another thing, too, to add to the drill, and we'll work talk on turnovers, same thing. The second guy in, be aware and be conscious of taking that ball out. That first guy makes contact, that second guy's in, boom, take it out. In a lot of our schemes, we play a quarters where both safeties are involved in that front. You know, there's a lot of times they're coming with unblocked principles. They're coming with unblocked. This time as you go, go ahead and cut back and see what it's look like to the other, other, to the other safety. He's in position, boom, there's the cutback. Be careful not to overrun. Second safety in. Second safety in, think the ball. But again, we're trying to make the plays at the line of scrimmage and filling them in the hole. No gain. The drill we're going to do here, guys, is come to balance. After watching the drill being filmed without pads, we get a chance to take a look here at shuffle and explode. We also have added the defensive shoot, forces you guys to definitely play a lot lower and work up through the ball carrier. The guy's tackling is in the shoot, he shuffles, maintains leverage, comes out of the shuffle, and explodes on the ball carrier. This one here is a pretty poor example, to be honest. If you look, the head's behind. He's not hitting, low, not hitting high to low. You want to leverage that ball carrier, stay out in front, low to high. Coming down, shuffle, explode, much better. You can see the head's in front on contact, working back through the ball carrier, taking him off the ground. Needs to maybe have more feet on contact, a little faster, more feet on contact. Not too bad. As again, his nose is right in the chest of that ball carrier, working those feet, run through on contact. Another pretty good example here. Again, shuffle and explode. Here's a good example of game footage of the shuffle explode in action. Uh, number 20 and also number 29 here, both safeties. You know, they're working down the line, shuffling, and explode up through the ball carrier. As you can see, good pad level down on the goal line here. And then the next defensive back, as you can see, coming across, making contact right there. Again, a good pad level, good leverage, shuffling through and working up through the ball carrier and keeping him out of the end zone. Another example of the shuffle explode is a player uh, highlighted right here. As he comes down, he's in position, shuffles across, and then explodes up through the ball carrier. And you can see from the end zone here in a second, you know, through that shuffle and working his feet. The only thing I liked at the end, if he kept that head in front to eliminate any extra yards. You know, it's critical when it's a third down and one or third down and two, and they gain less than that. So he's working down, there's the shuffle, in position, explode up through, and again, the finish. Again, a better idea of actually the drill in action with pads on and full go. You're looking at uh, fill the whole tackle here. Again, the toss sweep. Running back, uh, hitting any hole available, the first hole he wants. He could turn it up at any time. A defensive back, again, you can see the leverage. Number 25 is doing a really good job of staying behind the ball and, again, making contact in the hole and exploding up through and driving back through the bag. The only thing, he could have been a little lower on contact. 
But again, he's got to fill that hole. We want to make tackles at the line of scrimmage, not down the field. Again, low to high, pop up through them. Again, running back, he decides what hole he wants. Pretty good contact in the hole. Don't wind up. Nice, sharp, precise movement. And drive him back through the bags. Drive him back through the bags. Key is leverage. Again, make that tackle in the hole. We'll also add that to the tackle. He might take it completely outside and it just becomes a sideline tackle. But, uh, you know, we're looking for safeties to come down. If you watched here, and, you know, this isn't a great example, but you can see what happens if you don't have your feet, to, you know, if you have your feet together, and that's one of the indicators of a miss, you can see the player's feet are together and not moving on contact, and he ends up on the ground. So it's very important, you know, you keep a good base and those feet underneath you and those feet alive on contact. Good example here, staying behind the ball, up through the ball carrier. If he cuts back, making that contact in the hole and then driving through, the, through, the, through, uh, through contact. Tackle. Too many times you hear uh, coaches talk about you want to break down before you make the tackle. Well, we're really not breaking down. We don't want to break down and get our feet stuck in concrete and a good running back makes us miss. What we want to do is we want to come to balance. We want to be in a position where our feet are still moving and being able to hit. Back up a little bit, 10 yards from it. The drill, the setup of the drill, again, you put an agile bag, and each player is 10 yards away from the agile bag. Back up a couple yards. What they'll do, the ball carrier's there. He'll run full speed to the bag as fast as he can with both hands on the ball. Both hands on the ball. The defensive player, Coming from that angle, will also run full speed towards the bag. The big thing with this one is the full speed. You can't go half speed because anybody can come to the bag and break down half speed. I want to sprint this bag, control myself, keep my weight you know, over top of my hips, and change direction. Running back, as you come down towards the bag, as you're sprinting down, come on, walk towards it, you're going to get there. Once you get to the bag, you're going to get your feet chopping for just a second once he gets here. On the next hit or the next command, He'll go either left or right, and you'll just switch the ball. So if you're going to the left, put the ball in your left hand and go, and you'll front up and tackle him. As he comes across, too, same thing. So you're looking. When he switches, you're going to come up. But again, we're just going to walk through it. Go ahead. We'll walk through it. Together, we'll walk through it together. On the hit, walk. Boom. Come on. Go. As they're coming down, they get the position. Again, good football position. Feet chopping. Hit. If he goes and switches, boom, angle tackle. Hit on the rise and explode through. But for the drill to be effective, it needs to be done full speed. Because as a defensive player, when you're playing, you have to run from point A to point B full speed, control your body, control your position, keep your feet on the move, and be able to run through a ball carrier. So right now, we'll go ahead. We'll give a shot full speed. Be careful on the contact, but get to that bag on the first hit. On the second hit, you go either direction. Okay? Ready to go now. Ready? Hit! Get here, feet alive. Ah, again, trains the eyes too. You got to get to that spot, read that running back's hips, and go ahead and go. Next two in line. Next two in line. As you're coming down, full speed. Hit. Hit. Ah, head in front. This one here, a lot of common errors. Guys won't have their head in front. You got to keep your head in front and run up through him. We'll go through it one more time. Do me a favor, guys. We'll go from that angle. Throw the balls down to those guys. Those guys are the ball carriers. Same thing. You're the defensive player. Running backs. Both hands are on the ball because you don't know which way you're going. I want both hands here, and you put that ball in the outside hand. Again, you're coming down. Come to balance. Feet on the move. I won't keep you there long. On the hit. Hit. Fast you can. Hit. Not too bad. The big thing, too, guys, a lot of players, as you're doing a drill, they kind of cheat a little bit. I want you guys to get all the way to the bag. Sometimes their actually helmets touch one another. I want you to get over the bag. I want you to get as close as possible before you make that cut. Last one. Hit. Get as fast as you can. Get to that bag position. Hit. Pretty good. That's not too bad. Head in front. Good. After watching the, the walkthrough drill without pads on, here's a really good look at come to balance tackle. Guys, again, 
The key to this drill is the speed of it. It needs to be full speed, both guys coming downhill as fast as possible, attacking the bag, coming to balance, not breaking down, feet alive, head in front and running through the ball carrier. Again, guys can cheat this drill by staying too far away from the bag, then they have space to make the tackle. We want those guys to crowd that bag and see who can make that quick movement in a small space. Again, guys coming down full speed, pretty good explosion here. Just got to be careful to keep that head in front. It's very difficult to run full speed, stop on a dime, and change direction. And it's really not stop. It's get your feet motoring and then change direction as soon as possible. But uh, as you can see, guys coming downhill, feet alive. Again, you need to get your eyes on the hips of that ball carrier. You can see right here, his, the defensive player, his eyes are a little high. Looks like he's looking upstairs and completely whiffs on the ball carrier. Eyes need to be focused on the hip of that ball carrier in position. Here's a pretty good tackle, but again, head is behind. Anytime you get your head behind the ball carrier, they're probably going to gain extra yards. So really emphasize getting that head in front on come to balance. We're in position, come down, boom, head in front, run your feet. Attack that bag full speed in position, head in front, drive up through the guy. It's a very tough tackle to make with that head in front. As you can see, a couple guys still making that mistake of getting their head behind. Not in position, but still makes up and gets that head in front. It'll stop a lot of extra yardage if you get your head in front. Pretty good job right here. Again, in position, feet alive, come to balance tackle. Okay, Here's a live example of the tandem tackle with both safeties. You can see that running back has a two-way go. We're working with a force safety and a full cutback safety. If the ball comes to you, you're the force guy. If the ball's away, you're full cutback. We're working on two safeties working together. He's hitting the hole. There's the tackle. The other safety's in position. As you can see, 29, the left safety kind of overruns it. You got to keep leverage and be in position to make that play. And we always talk about that second guy in looking to make the, make the strip and take the ball away from the ball carrier. Really important to play your angles and leverage. You know, you guys are working together. The front side safety being the force, the back side safety being the full cutback guy. As you can see, number 10 right now is the force, working outside in. Number 25 ends up being the full cutback player. Ball never got to him, but he's in position. You can also do this drill with uh, a corner and a safety, as the corner being the outside guy and the safety being the inside guy, working also that tandem tackle. Again, he's working backside. Here's the cutback. As you can see, number five's coming down the left safety, looking to force it. It's cut back. Number 37 fills the hole in position. Number five coming in, also looking for that, that strip attempt. But really good job there of those guys working as a team and, 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 and funneling that ball carry to one spot and making the tackle. Again, they're reading their keys. Runs coming downhill. Runs at 16. He's in position. There's the cutback. 29, this is a good job of both guys making contact. Boom and boom. Should be a strip attempt. Mirror tackle. Basically, you have two boxes. Four cones there, four cones there, with a neutral zone of about you know, two yard and a half, two yards. Basically, the ball carrier's in one box, the tackler's in the other box. You can make the box as big as you'd like. It's kind of tight right here. Basically, on the first command, the running back can go to any cone he wants. The defender will mirror him. So if he goes to that cone, he'll mirror down. And they'll keep going until the second command. On the second hit, you'll attack through the running back zone, and you'll make contact and run up through him, hit on the rise, and secure the tackle. So on the hit, we'll go ahead and go. Hit. Boom. Mirror. Keep, keep leverage. Keep leverage. Eye him up. Good. Follow the cone. Follow the cone. Give it to the cone. Get to the cone. Wherever he goes. Hit. And then it is. Boom. Explode up through. Good tackle. That's the way. Snap. No pads on you. You're going to kill him. That's all right. Next guy in. That was a good hit. Again, a couple good things about this drill. If you want to do a little conditioning and also get tackle work, because it's tough to tackle guys in the fourth quarter, this is a good one. Shoot, I can stick you in that box and keep going. You can go for four days and you got to make the tackle. Again, you don't have to backpedal. You can turn and run anywhere you want. You need to be in position when you see him. When you see him, let's see it again. Hit. He comes down. Attack. There you go. Leverage. Ah, oh, you got to go now. Come on. Got to go. Got to go. Don't cross over. Hit. 
Ball's carry it is, front it up. Again, hitting that contact zone and run up through. And run up through. Let's go one more time. One more time. You haven't been ball carrying. Move up a little bit. Get right in the middle of that box. On the hit. Hit. There it is. In position. In position. Ah, you got to go to the right cone. Time out. Go back. Run it again. Oh, my. You got to mirror him. You got to believe what you see. You got to go to that cone. When he attacks downhill, you attack downhill. He goes back, you go back. Let's try it again. Hit. Boom. Attack. In position. There we go. That's fine. You're good. Get downhill. Come on. Come on. Come on. Squeeze. Hit. And boom. There's a tackle in the zone. The big thing about this one, if you miss, if you happen to get off track early, it's tough to get back on track. You really got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. One thing I always want to add too, and I'm going to show it real quick in this drill because I think this is a real mental toughness kind of drill, kind of a fourth quarter overtime drill. Give me two more guys in there. And I won't try to kill you on this one, but what we'll do, we call this overtime. And we can do it in any drill, regardless of what tackling drill it is, we call it overtime. The players really hate it, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Basically what I'll do is you're in a box on defense. Before the drill starts, we're going to do some up downs. So basically, I, I go ready, I go ready, hit, back up, hit, hit, hit. And now I say, let's go, ready for the drill. Hit, and he attacks. Boom, and he's to the box. Hit. The thing is, that was nice. I was being nice to you. We talked about perseverance and all that stuff in the, in the PowerPoint presentation. All that. That's what it means to me. I might get a guy in that box. And today is your day. I'm going to see how I might go. I might do 25 up-downs. might try to bury you. The thing is, I want to see how can you make a tackle in overtime when you're tired. And not only will we do that with this drill, we'll do it with all the drills. might start off with the angle tackle. So anytime, at any, any point of the practice, we can stick overtime into any drill. Here's an example of uh, the mirror tackle in the live situation. And those guys are in the middle of the box, and they're mirroring that guy from cone to cone. Again, if you get behind on the first one and you, and you, you get out of whack, it's tough to make the play. If you can see the space between the cones is where you need to make that contact and you shouldn't let them in your box. Again, a very uh, mental toughness type drill where you, know, you get a guy and, and you get him in that box and, and they just keep pushing him and pushing him and eventually that, that tackler gets a little tired and you're hoping for him to have to make a tackle when he's a little tired. You know. It's not just good enough to make tackles you know, in the first and second quarter. You need to make tackles in the fourth quarter and in overtime situations. But again, he's just mirroring that running back wherever he goes. And on the second command, he's in that box and making the tackle. Right there was a pretty good snap uh, on contact. But again, you're following that guy from cone to cone. As you can see, this player's all out of whack. He missed from the, the initial cone. And again, not a very good job in all in that drill. If you take a look, your key is that, your, your, your target's the key and the target is the running back with the ball, both. Again, work to that cone. Working across, always knowing where that ball carrier is. Go to the cone he goes to. This is a pretty good job here mirroring him. And then when that second whistle's blown, again, make contact in that contact zone, run your feet on contact. The drill we're gonna do right here is a cut stock tackle. In other words, we're gonna play off a cut block, off a stock block, and tackle. So we're trying to get as many skills at one time in one drill, we're trying to get as many guys going at one time. Basically, in the beginning of the drill, guys on all fours, he's going to attempt to cut the defensive player. He's just going to shoot out towards his outside leg. When we're playing off that cut block, we got to make sure he does not get to our outside leg. Getting the hands on the back, hands on the helmet, keeping that back leg free, and gaining ground towards the ball carrier. It's one thing to play off the cut, but you don't want to lose ground. You got to attack. So at the beginning, the drill looked like this. He's going to cut. Go ahead. Boom, he's cutting again. Play off of that. Don't cross over. Look, because we're coming through on that cut. Just back up. Come through on that cut. He's going to cut me. Look, come on. Go. Boom. I don't, I don't want to cross over. I'm nice and low. Bump on my toes. Good football position. Ready to play. You cross over, you get knocked down. So as I come across, a lot of high school guys don't play us to make cuts. You get to college, you're going to get chopped. So slide out a little bit. So there's the cut. Go ahead, hit, boom, you can play that cut, there it is, and squeeze. And as you go, we want to work up towards the ball carrier. Next guy coming in is a stock guy. He's coming to stalk him. As he stalks him, a couple things we want to do 
We want to eliminate this block. We want to get our hands inside if we can and then rip through the guy. One big common error of a defensive player playing off a stock block, they get so concerned with the guy trying to block them. Your number one focus and objective is the ball carrier. So as I come off that cut and I'm coming to play that stock, my eyes are still on that running back. I'm not worried about you. I'm playing through you. If you're not there, I'm going right to the ball. But if you're there, then I'll engage. Again, hands inside, hit with force, go ahead and dip and rip, and run through that ball carrier. So there's the stock. He's coming in, boom, in position, rip with that inside hand, and carry up. And basically now it's an angle tackle. Again, lower, hit on the rise, and up through. We're kind of going to walk through this one. Here's how the drill should look. After he cuts, you kind of go towards him. I walk through it about half speed on the hit. Hit, boom, there's the cut, attack downhill. There's the stock and rip, boom, and there's the tackle. So all three phases right into one. Big thing, common point with the, with the cut block is to make sure you keep your outside leg free, low, hands on him. Again, stock block, when you're taking the stock on, your key is the running back. You work through the block. If he's not there, go to the ball carrier. You might just rip and run. But if you have to engage him, get your hands inside, go ahead and rip, and then it's just an angle tackle, head in front. After the walkthrough on the field, here's a better chance to look at it in the live footage with the cut stock tackle. Again, playing off that cut. The big thing about playing off the stock block or any cut block is Yes, that's your secondary focus is the guy trying to block you, but your primary focus is the ball carrier. As you can see here, you know, taking on the stock here, he just kind of runs through it because he's looking at the ball carrier. Really good job of snap by number one. As you can see, he gets off the cut, not great technique, but his eyes are on the ball carrier. Rips through this ball, the, the cut guy, knocks him on the ground, I mean the stock guy, right to the ball carrier, head in front, good explosion, just need to keep that head in front. But all in all, as a tackler, your main focus needs to be on the ball carrier. You know, your secondary focus is the tackler. You can see here this isn't a good job by the cut because he gets up to his second leg. That outside leg needs to be kept free. And again, he worries at this point here with the guy trying to stalk him and misses the tackle completely. The focus needs to be on the ball carrier, secondarily on the blocker. By focusing on the guy trying to block you, you don't make the tackle. 36 here, better job. Again, taking on that cut, getting the hands down, working up through the blocker, and there's pretty good contact. Again, as you take on each block, you want to gain ground towards the ball carrier. You don't want to lose ground. Main emphasis on the cut, keep that outside leg free. Don't let him get to your outside leg. Even if he gets to your inside leg, he can't cut you. If he gets to your outside leg, he's got you. Again, on the cut, he doesn't get off quick enough. He doesn't get a chance to get to the stock. He has a tough time, has to reach on the tackle. Again, right here pretty good, working off the cut, ripped through the stock. He didn't even have to play off the stock because he got to the point of attack quick enough. Again, it's a chance to work on a couple different aspects of taking on blocks and block protection. Here's a good job off the cut, good on the stock, and there's a good on the tackle. In this case here, he had to take on both blocks, off the stock, off the cut, head in front on the tackle. This drill here is called the relentless drill. And uh, it takes a uh, little bit of the technique and pretty proper tackling out of play. This drill here is designed a couple reasons. Number one, to see who, if it's crunch time or it's war time, it's, 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 somebody's got to make a play, who's going to dig a little deeper and get to that ball carrier. It's, it's not a whole lot of technique because sometimes there's some great tackles made and techniques out the window. It's about just getting him down. The way we set the drill up, and I think it's important to set it up this way to get the full effect. Number one, there are no lines. Number one, there's no like your first, your second, your third, your fourth. We basically have all the defensive backs or defensive backs and linebackers together and they just basically line up inside the hash mark. And we pretty much say, Whoever wants to go, let's go. And we'll see who wants to pop up and go ahead and make those plays. We usually have a bigger stand-up dummy, one of the big red Titan pop-up bags. We'll have them right there. And basically, you jumped up there, you jumped up there. Your job is to keep him away from that bag. Your job is to get to that bag. There are no starting commands and there are no finishing commands. 
The drill finishes one of two ways. You either knock the bag down or you quit. That's basically how it works. And all we do, and it doesn't matter who comes in. So what, we'll, and that's why I really don't want to see, you know, lines. We want to see who's going to jump up. I'm going to hold this bag just because it keeps falling down. So it's on you guys. All we do is give a command to go on the hit, get to the bag, just kind of shuffle and mirror each other, don't kill each other. Ready? Let's go on the hit, hit. Boom! All he does is just get to the bag, just get to the bag, just get to the bag, just get to the bag. Boom! That's it, and tackle it. We'll go ahead and run full. Full. It's tough to do this without pads on. Full tackle. And like I said, there are no lines. There's not like your second, your third, who's up. I want to see, and we really, we really like to film this drill because I want to see who's going to jump in there. There's times where you might go six times, and you might go none. And I noticed you want to play and you don't. That's kind of how that works. Then we make it a little more interesting. One's not enough. We go two guys up. So you come on up. It's two on one. And there's two different ways. We'll stagger them like this, or we'll have a guy, one here, one there. And it's basically back up. We'll spread it out a little bit, move up, move up. It's get to the bag. And this gets a little crazy. We get after it. And like I said, it, there's no command. Just hit, go ahead and go. You either get to the bag or quit. So kind of we'll kind of walk through this. You kind of let him through after a while, maybe. But no, it, it really it really tells you as a coach what guy really wants to play, especially on defense. So on the hit, we'll go ahead and walk, kind of walk through this. On the hit, hit, and basically you can attack him anytime you want. You can come and get him. You can go back and get him. So you can go back and get him. You can go back and get him. You can keep him going, run him out of there. You can keep running him out of there. All right, whistle, hit. We would never stop that drill, but you can see what I mean. And you guys, you, go, you want a drill to take back to your coach next year, this is the one. This is it. All it is, you put up a big stand-up mag and don't call them out. It don't even matter. Just whoever wants to show up, show up. But we call that relentless. Our defense is built on a relentless type attitude. We're going to get to that ball carrier come hell or high water, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to see who's going to get it done. Definitely uh, the footage that you just saw previous to this about the relentless drill it's almost impossible to describe unless it's full go. And here's a really good look of the relentless drill, uh, full speed live. You know, we talk about the setup, and it's very important to set the drill up the way it was explained. Basically, a command to start it, and you either finish with a tackle or finish by quitting. As you can see, we let it go all the way until the guy gets the bag. We talk about competition within the group. Right here, number 24 is the starting safety. And number 18 is the backup safety. And you can see number 24 doesn't want to give up his job. Actually, number nine. And he just keeps working and working, and he finishes him. And, you know, it's a way to, to really test the mettle of, of every player you have. Again, there are no lines. You can go as many times as you want. You can go against anybody you want. You can call anybody out that you want. So it's one of those drills. You know, it, it really gets down to, to what football is all about, being tough, especially a defensive player. You know, we're going to get to the back. Not all tackles are pretty, but it's get to the ball. And we'll do this not only with, amongst the defensive backs. We'll do it with the whole defense. We'll have D linemen in there. We'll have corners in there. But there's no stopping. And as coaches, we really get after it in this drill. I mean, we want our guys as jacked up and fired up and going full speed at all times. But again, there's pretty much, you know, it's no holds bar, really no rules. Get to the back. Get to the back. It's pretty simple. If you get knocked down, you get back up. If you get knocked down again, you get back up. If you take a look here, we make the drill a little harder. We'll actually put two guys there. As you can see, a lot of guys crowd around. It's one of those drills with high intensity. You know, every time we do this drill, the offensive guys stop practice and, and turn and look down the field because, you know, they'd love to be down there. But uh, if a guy can get to the bag two on one, we know, hey, there's a football player. And you can see number eight doing a great job of getting to that bag. Basically, it's whoever wants to come up, you know, show up and let's go. But again, do what you got to do to make a miss, but your job is to keep him off of that bag. Again, not a pretty tackle, but he got the top of the bag and knocked it down. Again, there's always a big finish in this drill. It's either finish with the bag or finish on the ground, but it's two on one. We got guys getting cut, they got to pop back up, and you just keep fighting and fighting. Stick tackle. Near leg, near shoulder. 
I'm going to my right, I should plant with my left foot. Wrong plant there. It's a good tackle. Near leg, near shoulder. Jump through it.